Ah. King Arthur's dire condition shows no signs of improvement. Despite the efforts of the healers who come to tend his wounds that still won't heal. Merlin is lost, so your only chance to find a cure is to find the mysterious healer by venturing among the survivors of a recent plague. Okay. Survivors of the plague. It's an adventure. Also, it's actually got chapters this time. Cornwall. Oh, Saul Fomorian's King Wolfric. Ah, the Green Knight. Self Malaho. Hello, Septimus. I think the wall's looking a bit different from what I recall. Ibarakum. So instantly my morality is looking good. Springborn. Uh. Oh, it's a skill. Seely Warriors, Seely Archers, they're the ones I really want. Seely Council Guards. I can't open Diplomacy yet. Right. Hello, uh, Coventry. Yes, my lord. Yes, sir. No, I didn't want you. Ready to serve. You know that your only chance. Yeah. Ready to serve. Move to my objective. On my way. You know that your only chance of finding a cure for your father's ailment is to find the enigmatic healer. He recently appeared in the province of Coventry, where he dealt with the outbreak of a mysterious plague in a nearby village. You mingle with the survivors of this plague in an attempt to find this man. Start. The forest is filled with birdsong, but this deceptive piece is even more disturbing than the gloom of Bedigrain. You hope to find the healer in one of the nearby villages and get back to fighting more visible threats. As the road turns, a pack of dirty children run up to you. Well, instantly that one goes for Christianity in my morality, because I'm going for Old Faith, that's instantly gone. As our Lord Jesus said. That's going to be a bit of a dick one. I will hear them out. Even peasant children have the right to address their lord. The children are dirty and scared. The oldest barely dares to speak, and his words chill you. Sir Knight, there is a plague in our village, and it is turning people evil. Those who survive are not only disfigured in their body, but in their heart. They want to kill us. Tell me more. I need all the information I can get. Christian here came from a village near London, and it was his parents that fell sick first. His mother died and his father went mad. He tried to cut him open like a pig, so he ran. His baby brother Tim didn't make it. They used his blood to water some strange plants. Stay with me. You'll be safe under my protection. The villagers of Greenham don't care about their children. So you order your men to take care of them for the time being. The children were right. There is something wrong with these people. You see cripples and pox-marked, warty men, and their sly looks make you feel dirty. They deserve compassion and help. I have yet another reason to find the healer. One of the few healthy people, a dignified, middle-aged man walks up to you, wringing his hands. He says the healer was here and tried to cure them, but a knight living near the village kidnapped him. 
They fear for him because Sabio often kills and tortures people. This story could be true, but it feels wrong. I go to a quiet grove to meditate. The apple trees blossom in the orchard, but their scent is far too sweet and cloying. It is the stench of decay. You see that the earth is black with dried blood, and you find a clump of human hair matted with blood in the grass. It can't have been here for more than a few days. What happened here? I demand an answer from the village elders. The same sweating, middle-aged man faces you. It is a, a yet another example of the night's treachery, he mumbles. He murders our children and disturbs our dead. And he has your healer, too. You really have to defeat him. He's lying, but I need more information. Time to ask the knight. Sir Beor's castle is a mile from Greenham. You ride there with your men and have your herald call out. Sir Beor, we know you have the healer, he says after the usual flourishes. Whom your king needs. The knight appears on the walls. Your Highness, he says, let us parley. As a knight, I am bound to honor his request. We meet in a field, unarmed. You meet in the field by the castle. Sir Beor sighs when you demand the healer. He was looking to cure this plague, but had to move on to learn more. He told me he found out that this was no sickness but a curse, and I should keep away from Greenham. It's already fallen to it. This makes some sense, but I'm still not getting the full story. Tell me more. You're free to search the castle. You'll find no plague victims there. The villages are plagued by an evil ritual. As the demons hatch in their bosoms, they die or are deformed to reflect their new nature. Some are still unharmed, but the demon wants to devour them too. Is there a way to cure the, these people and save the village? I need to know. Those possessed by the demon are lost. The only way to stop the demon spreading its seed is to lure it into the open. We need to convince it that it's safe. Take me prisoner and act as if your men didn't care about the plague. It'll come for the fresh prey and we can catch it. It's a good plan. My men will gladly serve as bait to save innocent people. You bind Sir Beor and parade him through Greenham. The villagers throw eggs at him, but you don't let them stone him. He's taken back to the castle while your men join the villagers' celebrations and pretend to get drunk. Your troops move into position around Greenham. I dress up as a common soldier and join my men. I take the same risks as they. The merrymaking in the village isn't quite as merry as it should be. More and more of the disfigured plague survivors join the dance, and you find you're being herded towards the orchard. When you get there, one of them begins to chant, and a horrible black shape arises. Now is the time to strike. I whip out my mighty sword and attack the monster. The black shape is a true monster. It's the most repulsive creature you've ever seen, including a few unseelie dignitaries. It fights hard and dirty, screaming in an inhuman tongue, but in the end, it falls. You are a tougher kill than these poor villagers were. Poor villagers. I hope the knight was wrong and I can free them. When the demon lies dead, you hear moaning and screaming. You look around and see the plague survivors rolling on the ground, clawing their chests. Some of the seemingly healthy ones are in agony as well, including the village elder you spoke with. They must already be infected. I look to Sir Beor for his decision. After all, these are his peasants. The healer said those infected can't be saved, Sir Beor says. 
But now that we know who they are, we can get rid of them and start a new life. We'll burn this cursed place, and the true survivors will build a new village. Come up to the castle, and we'll discuss it further. This sounds good to me. That's the human spirit, strong enough to start anew. The people in the castle are shaken, but relieved that the demon is gone. No one here was affected. You are relieved that the taint is cleansed. Sir Bior tells you the healer went to Coventry to seek knowledge there. He warns you some suspect that the demons have appeared there, too. Intriguing. My good sir, my name is Sir Meliot, and it was your father's wish that I be your aid in the future, to relieve you of mundane, everyday tasks. I would be more than pleased to advise you if that is your wish. I'll also welcome the messengers, and decide which matters require your immediate attention. Oh, I'm sure I can trust you. My lord, Sir Beor warned you that troubles are brewing in the town of Coventry, and the king of the province might have gone mad. Now that you are aware how the Fomorian plague affects the mind and the soul, it's imperative that you personally investigate the truth of such rumours, especially in a province so near Hartwood Keep. Indeed. Right, so I got a diplomacy quest and a quest quest, or adventure quest. Purge of Coventry and Stolen Relic. Interesting name. Norgales. Yitlegkok. Uh, Viraconian. That's London. So I wonder where... Cause that was... Oh, bloody hell. Gloucester. <laughs> yes, because if memory serves, that's where I made... That is exactly where I made Camelot in the first game. Objectives, morality, still can't access things. Morality! I will become a rightful and just king. Ooh, wizard armor. Without using any spells, without capturing any victory locations. Oh, div only human. <laughs> I like the way it has that in red. Oh, only human. Plus two to lore. Intriguing. Right, diplomacy is over here. Uh, oh, I don't have another turn. Uh, action. You're terrifying. Go away. Ah. This is the diplomacy window. I know all about that. Thanks. Since... Ah, so the bishop, the wanderers, and the guild of outlaws. The bishop, since King Arthur changed the fate of the land and brought back the Age of Wonders, the Christian Church has ceased to be the one and only religion in Britannia anymore. The bishops had a hard time accepting this new way of life, but that doesn't render them powerless or useless. Far from it. Both the followers and the leaders of the church have found a new sense of purpose and a new means of working with the miraculous changes. The council is a more powerful force, is a powerful force that everyone has to reckon with. Uh, wanderers. Long ago, the heroes of the Shi walked this land, but slowly they withdrew to the twilight realms of Tir Nog and became legends. What are they to do now, when the legends live once again? The Shi have returned to Britannia and walk among mortals. They are feared, respected, hated, but most of all, really dangerous. It is very rare that either of the two courts of the Shi, the Seely and the Unseely, try to establish any diplomatic relations with the mortals. 
and it is and even when they do it is very difficult to understand their otherworldly thinking outlaws the new age of chivalry has come to britannia knights joust on the tawny fields champions roam the wilderness and kings rule from their fortresses but under the proud marble towers there is poverty and hordes of refugees hide in the woods after their villages have been destroyed by the constant wars and plundering monsters it's no wonder that the outcasts of britannia have their own royal court thieves cutthroats and outlaws who don't care about tyrants or knights and whose services can be bought with gold coins intriguing oh bloody hell uh Arcane Law, Patronage, Joint Venture, Alliance, Trade Agreement, always useful. Military Training, Hiring Archers, oh they're mistrustful. Exploration, Villagers. Right, so immediate thing with the she council <laughs> yeah with the she council i instantly want a non-aggression treaty the nobles of the she normally place no value on pacts with humans but their tenuous position in this realm and their inability to return to tirna nog has presented them with an exceptional situation certainly the thought of attacking them in their own stronghold is a foolish notion at best but they might appreciate an assurance of peace, nevertheless. Very well. I send a lock of my hair along with a formal offer, allowing the Shi to place binding magic on me. The nobilities of the Shi don't normally care for pacts with humans. Uh, is that just repeating the... Yeah, it is. It's a plus ten to the Shi Council. My clear dedication helps me to conclude the necessary alliance. Ooh, I can buy magical accessories. Oh, hello. Desperate mobs. Oh, great. <laughs> so in order to get an alliance, I need 60 with the reputation. I need to get 10 to Old Faith. I don't think I have the Grail Shards yet. Well, trade. The She Council has been the most secretive of all the Keepers of Arcane Secrets. However, now they are stranded in Viraconium, cut off from their magical land of Tirnanog, and they desperately require resources. They are willing to share some of their secrets for a price. Certain materials can be used as spell components, but since they are very rare or difficult to manufacture, it's hard to, or even impossible to obtain them. The she could help me with that. Oh. Arcanists can prepare unique tinctures and, or ointments they call potions from certain herbs. Potions can make spell weaving easier, but they always have nasty side effects. I think I'd go with that one. It's more expensive, but... I kind of like that. Uh, let's go with... Easier or less tiring. I think for the time being, that one. And it will be you. Select. Close. Yeah, so I need to get more reputation because I need to get an alliance. Fortarian, plus five reputation for every new tier. Oh, for Mori Hater. Oh, I see. So you get reputation for various. Watchamaduda. Plus one for every third law point. Plus two for defeating a Fomorian army. I get it. 
can't talk to Septimus Sula just yet. <laughs> oh wow, Sep I think Septimus Sula is one of the bigger. Seriously? He's lost the bloody Deadlands after the effort I went through to get him the Deadlands. Asshole. After the Formorians devastated the populated regions of Britannia, large groups of refugees from the burned out villages didn't leave for the newly founded provinces, but stayed on in the wastelands. They've banded together into ragtag mobs and have been looting the deserted settlements for food and resources, sometimes even confronting the smaller Formorian warbands. Intriguing. Uh, yeah, right, I don't need that anymore. As the mobs of refugees wandering the wasteland slowly run out of deserted places to loot, they increase their attacks on the populated settlements along the borders of the newly formed provinces. Due to lack of proper equipment and weapons, they can't cause much damage for the time being, but I should deal with the situation before things get out of hand. Right. That would... That's more expensive, but... It gives me one to write for and increases my reputation with Lord Raymond. Or I can get a little less reputation but get some extra Deepwood Warriors. I'll go for this one. First, the looting mob refuse to believe that I only want what's best for them, but my generous offering makes them relaxed until they are willing to give up the life on the wasteland for their new homes. Construction complete, randomly. Right, now it was that one. Hello, random trader for Lord Raymond. On my way. A controversy occurred near the border of your kingdom. A group of refugees have recently crossed over from Meacham, but the captain of the local guards wants to arrest them for theft. They say the refugees stole a Christian relic as they passed by a nearby church. The leader of the refugees is a priest who rejects the accusations and is threatening to bring the matter before the bishop's council. Since they are on your land, they request your judgment. Of course they do. When I arrive, a refugee visits me in secret. It turns out he is a member of the Outlaws, uh, the Guild of Outlaws in disguise, and he is the thief. He offers me a sizable fun if I resolve the situation in his favour. Uh... If I expose him, I get one to rightful and plus five with Lord Raymond, but the Guild of Outlaws gets a little upset with me. I'm not doing... I'm not arrested, uh, torturing the warrior of the Outlaws. That gives me minus ten to the bishop. The thing is, depending on how like the previous game it is, Christianity are big heavy hitters. No, I am a rightful person. I cannot let him get away with this. I can make it up to the outlaws later if I need to. Ready to serve. Uh, so if I go back to diplomacy, Lord Raymond. He's kind of he kind of likes me now. Because the fateful attack on King Arthur took place in Medisham under the watchful eye of the Guardians of the Grail, many of your followers blamed them for the cataclysm. As a result, Lord Raymond, Medisham's new regent and former head of the Guardians, keeps a wary eye on Hartwood Keep. 
If you made a gesture showing that you harbor no ill will against him, he would surely be more open to cooperation. I shall settle this after the Fomorian fret is over. Long-term peace of five years. He's still mistrustful. He's a bit of an ass like that. Uh, I don't know who the hell you are. Oh, you're... Uh, okay, culture Britons. Yeah, obviously, culture Welsh. <laughs> Still mistrustful, the assholes. But you are a Roman culture. That is concerning. Non-aggression treaty. King Cole's kingdom is under constant threat from the marauding rogue knights and the Formorian raiders. So it's not surprising that he wants to secure peace with everyone else around his realm. He's already made a non-aggression pact with Meacham and his envoys have been proposing one with us as well. Perhaps it's in both your interests to oblige his request. I wish to assure King Cole, who is a merry old soul, that I have no intention to attack him. I propose a permanent treaty. Still mistrustful, though. Although he doesn't need it to be as high, so I'll probably do get something that will grant me that later. Oh, what the hell? Brendel's Lair. Oh dear. Right, the Purge of Coventry. It'll take me a couple of turns to get there. End turn. Once again, the Fomorian armies terrify me. Oh, hello. A gift! The famously eccentric King Cole will soon celebrate the anniversary of his accession to the throne. It would be wise to send him something he particularly likes. According to your spies, he is fond of paintings, sculptures, and unique artifacts. I will... S I'm not sending him an artifact. I haven't actually sorted my inventory yet. I have a painting made especially for him. The present was most appreciated. I've definitely made a good impression. Enough of an impression that I can make an alliance. There we go. And I wonder what need for alliance does, because it says I can increase the trust in me. And find uh, e easier f e hand can easier find allies. Hmm, I can grammar. The Fomorians are threatening to overrun all the lands. Never before has Britannia faced an invasion on such a terrible scale. And the only way to survive is to form a great alliance between all the new kingdoms. I don't spare neither on money nor effort to build a stable alliance in Britannia. There we go. So now if I go to you, in order to have an alliance, it's now 55. Brothers in arms. I mean, all of the ones surrounding me, I kind of... Ah, except for you, apparently. <clears throat> I don't exactly have great military strength, do I? 
I'll wait to have more money before I start worrying about that. But non-aggression treaty. As a proud Welshman, King Duff had never liked to be a part of Arthur's kingdom. And he was among the first to declare independence when news of Arthur's condition began to spread. However, the cataclysm and the return of the dragons to Wales has changed his tone. He might be ready to negotiate. However, technically he has committed high treason. So he will look upon any overture with mistrust. If you wish to open talks with him, the first step would be an assurance of safety. I send him a loyal, uh, a loyal, royal letter of pardon and offer him non-aggression for three years because I'm not willing to give up an artifact yet. And then there's uh, King, no, that is King Dafid. Right, so King Aldred, who is also a Welshman. King Aldred was one of your father's most loyal vassals, and also his greatest critic. Though they had tremendous respect for each other, Aldred often openly disagreed with Arthur's methods. He believes the cataclysm was a result of some of your father's decisions, which is why he went his separate way. But this does not mean that there can be no peace between your kingdoms. I wish to bring him back to our side and offer a long-term pact that will give me plus 10. Aha. Uh -huh. Valuable supplies. Close. Trade agreement. Not doing the trade agreement just yet because I don't have the gold now. I really don't have the gold now. I'm a bit of a fool like that. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. need to win lots of battles and kill heroes to become immune to fire. A oh, what? That's a bit of a dick move. Why can't he have... Oh, whatever. Right. Can you move? Yes. Yes. 